really what the eye rolls are saying is, I respect the fact that you're the owner, but if you just let me do this. Business is messy and unpredictable. Sometimes lonely. So lonely. So lonely. (laughs) And inspiration can often come from really weird places. We pick up where the bullet point blogs and the highlight reels leave off. We start with the stories. Welcome back to So Here's My Story. I'm Jody. I'm Elliot. And this is our 97th episode. We are bearing down on 100. Yes, we are. <laughs> and the celebration that is going to accompany and it. That we haven't yet decided what it is. I'm sure it's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's but uh, be one great. thing we are going to be focusing on, though, is uh, the topic of celebrating milestones and accomplishments and whatnot. And we are still collecting those. We are going to use your contributions if you type them to us. We will read them. If you want to actually record them, you can either call our story line at 410-205-6055 and leave us a voicemail that we will use the audio of. Um, or you can actually text that number as well if you want to send us a text. Yes, so you can. Send them on in. Today, Jody brings us a story about uh, the dangers of doing somebody else's job before you actually hire them to do that. And you get to learn why our sound engineer, Tom's job is safe. <laughs> Exactly. You ready? Yep. So here's my story. I have often said that doing the work that I do sometimes feels like watching someone else parallel park a car because, you know, from outside <laughs> of it, you can, you know, you can see other oh, people. Oh, it's so things. easy. <laughs> well, I, I like the metaphor because it, it's not like I am, you know, wise about every single topic in the world. Yeah. It's not like I have some massive knowledge and brilliance or something. It's just that, that I have the benefit of not being in the car. So right. I can see like, Hey, you're going to hit a curve. Better or perspective. Hey, or, yeah, right. exactly. Absolutely. And not, not hampered by things I think I know, you know, that when yeah. you're in a problem. So I feel that way a lot. But in the past couple of weeks, there have been a couple very specific kind of place that you can get trapped when you are in your own complicated car trying to park it, blind spots. And it's a very particular blind spot. And that is when you feel like you have this really snarly, complicated problem. And business is chocked full of snarly, complicated problems. Sure. Um I'll give you one example, but it happened like three or four times. So it's another roundtable story, actually. One of my roundtable members has this data issue, and it's a really complicated data set, tons and tons of like thousands of data points. And he's been struggling with this for a while, trying to get the right data person or trying to get the data wrangled to a point where a data person can help them do statistics. And it's interesting because at first he was thinking, and I think this is a trap of entrepreneurs sometimes, well, I need to learn statistics so that I can manage my data. And so that was one conversation we had a couple months ago. I was like, no, 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 no. You, you don't go crack open a book on statistics at this right. point. Like you, you hire a statistician, <laughs> you, know, you get a postdoc to come in and crunch that data. But for I do you. understand and, the mindset. I'll let you finish, no, but do. I'm telling you, I understand the oh, mindset. Totally. Totally. I'm like, oh, you know, I, I do it. I'm like, oh, I'm going to be a landing page here. I'll go quickly learn WordPress. No, exactly. no, no. Like the time no. I tried to learn Java. Exactly. <laughs> right? Exactly. It's tempting because you're like, oh, I can just do this myself and I know what I want. So he was down with getting a statistician, but then he had this issue of having, having all this data. And it was so interesting because it took quite a while to kind of turn him around on this, but there just so happened to be somebody else on the call who is a, who does development. He's a programmer and is re- he worked for NASA. He's a very like statish, stati- statistician. Sta- wow. Words would be nice. That's today. a tough one though. Data huh? yeah. driven statistician. It's like a Dr. And, Seuss um, book. It's nice. <laughs> and so so what's interesting is he could very clearly see. So he's mm-hmm. he's also watching this car being parallel parked. And from yeah. his perspective, he can see something that even I can't see from where I'm standing is how easy it is to write a script. He had a couple of criteria. He's like, well, is it, does, I know that data is different every time, but it, does it come in the same format? Like the, the mm-hmm. if it comes in Excel or the columns and the rows, always the same yeah. for all your different things. And he was like, well, yeah, it is. And he said, well, we could write a script to just yank all that out and put it in. And my client it kept coming back to, yeah, but I have to, but I don't know exactly what I need on the output side of it. So first I have to figure that out. But, but in order to do that, I have to do all this stuff. And I finally like drew this picture. I was like, no, no, no. If, I think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, second person, but I think what I'm hearing here is if you write this script, you can yank the data out. You can do whatever you want quickly. If it's not the right thing, you can easily manipulate it, and do, but, but you won't have to do right. all this stuff. And finally, my guy was like, 
Oh, oh, okay. Because this will literally save him months of work that he thought he had in front of him. And the the aha for me in this is this particular kind of blind spot you can have in your own problems is not realizing that a lot of times the thing that's crazy hard for you is someone else's sweet spot, superpower, specialty. And it reminded me of the times like, you know, I, I try to Google through all sorts of things to diagnose myself before I go see a doctor as if mm-hmm. I should figure it out and then go see the professional. And that's exactly what he was doing. It was like, well, I got to figure this all out and then I'll hire somebody to help me. And I was like, mm. No. Well, and that <laughs> besides the fact that all the flow charts from WebMD inevitably end in paralysis or death. Exactly. Could or something be far whatever, worse. Something itchy or something far worse, <laughs> living death. But, and I've done it. I really, when I was chief operating officer of the hardware and software company, I did decide that, well, you know, in order to really talk to the, to the IT guys and, and some of the developers, I ought to teach myself Java. Mm-hmm. I ought to teach myself Java first so that I can really tell them what they need to know, mm-hmm. which there, there's a height of arrogance, there are stepping stones of arrogance in that thought process. But that's what I thought. And I, I did. I, st- I had my book and I said, this big, thick books that y- you get to teach myself Java. And it took me a while before I realized, well, this is just stupid. Right. Here's the thing, though. I think there's a certain level of to be strategic in your business, you have to understand things at the level that you need to understand them in order to use them strategically. So sometimes there is a bit of a learning that you need to do so that you can understand how to utilize a tool or a system or a, a whatever. It doesn't mean that you need to know how to punch all the buttons of the thing. No. And and, and for me, a lot of times it, I found that wherever I think somebody else's job description starts, a lot of times I have to, to step back one or two yes, blocks. Yes. Um, and it wasn't so, like he didn't know, think he needed somebody. He knew he needed, he knew somebody, he needed somebody, but he thought he had to do all this work yeah. first. And so a, a simple example, and this thankfully didn't actually happen, but, um, but it's, it's something akin to this is I know that I need somebody in marketing. I know somebody, I, I need somebody who understands social media, but my first mindset really was, and I didn't follow through with this, but was, well, wait a minute, before I get somebody in to really start working, with the social media platform, I got to establish all of the platforms first. Right. And I, if I establish them, because if she <laughs> comes in, plan, and then if she it. comes in and she says, well, wait a minute, you don't have, I don't know, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and all that stuff. What am I going to work with? So I really better establish this first and then give her the tools when really I should just say, yeah, I have nothing. Just well, do what voodoo you do. But I know what the end result should be. I know what I want. Yeah. But you just, you just brought up another piece to this. That's a little bit different, but but sort of the same is that when something doesn't exist at all in your organization, you you need somebody to design that system or put mm-hmm. the framework around the things yes. that may that often is not the person who is the right person to then maintain those systems. It may forever. or may not. So sometimes you need the short term person to come in and think strategically because I've we've all gotten into the 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 snarl of having like an entry level person come in and you try and have them set up. The yep. thing that's not set up yet. So in that case, I would say, yeah, you do need to have that thing if you want sort of a lower level person to be able to just come in and do it. But you'd be better off to just hire like a, uh, a consultant even to come in and say, okay, what is my strategy for social right. media? And so the place where I should have started was not with what do I need to do to right. do this job. The place where I should have started is what is the all-encompassing job description of that magic unicorn of a person that's going to come in and do everything? And then I may find out exactly to your point, but wait a minute, the reason that this is a unicorn is because I need two people. I need somebody who thinks more strategically. I need a consultant. Mm -hmm. I need somebody to build a framework. And then I need somebody, whether that person is senior level or an intern, but I need somebody who has the skills to maintain and just build upon what the other person had developed. But what I learned to try and um, direct my thinking to is the job description of the other as opposed to the new responsibilities that I'm going to undertake, (laughs) particularly when those new responsibilities involve, I, if only I just learned Sanskrit, I can, (laughs) you know, I can really do this thing. That, that is the red flag that like, if you are struggling with a knowledge base that is not yours, it is, you probably, I loved what you said, like take a couple steps back, get that person, get someone in earlier than, than you trying to learn a whole new skill set. And it's interesting. I, I see this topic come up a lot in the podcasting forum that I'm in where there's sort of this, 
and, and this doesn't go across the board, but sometimes I get this weird vibe in the podcasting world that if if you're not doing it all yourself, like every bit of the editing there is a and bit the work, the, then yeah. you're not really you're doing not a real it. And, um, and I got into yes. a, a very interesting conversation yeah. with someone. I said, they said, well, you don't do your own editing. And I said, no, we, we think of this like the same way I think about my business. Like I am my highest and best use in the world it's behind the mic is not editing. No. Like I would have to learn the whole software and there's an art to it. And, 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 you know, our audio engineer, Tom is, is brilliant. Yeah, I'm not so going to be as good, good as Tom is. No. That's, that's not going to happen. No, 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 no. In fact, it's almost like when you finally have tasted fine wine, yeah. um, when we were playing around to make our intro, I, I did actually play around with audacity to do that only mm -hmm. because I, I actually, too. I, well, but, but that is sort of like a different piece of this where I didn't know what to tell an audio person to do. I kind of needed to be able to play around with it to even know what I wanted to then have somebody do it. But in the process of doing that, when I got it all together with the music behind it and our different pieces of, and I had it all mocked up, it was almost like if I you know cut things out of a magazine or something and pasted them on the page, it was all the pieces. I listened to it and there was this tiny part of me who was like, I, you know, this actually sounds pretty darn good. I don't, I don't even know if we need Tom to really like play with this. But I sent it to him because, you know, we were going to or whatever. Yeah. And when it came back and I heard it, I was like, oh, oh, right. <laughs> oh okay. Right. That is, that well, is see, much better. But I don't even, I wouldn't even have known what that gap was until I saw the okay, gap. Okay. So I went through, <laughs> it's heard it, interesting because I, I went through the same exercise you did. And this is, I know you don't like to talk about this, but this is the podcast <laughs> that I had before. Podcast. Yes. Back in my other podcast. <laughs> and I did the same thing. I went through, I put the music and the intro and the outro and piece together with the episode. And as I'm doing that and getting all the pieces together, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm not doing this. <laughs> yes, it's taken it's so, so long hard. and yeah. I'm not doing it as well. And I don't even know what I'm missing, what it right. could be. And I'm like, well, that's yeah, the whole, I need like to the Dunning Kruger effect thing. Like you don't even know what you don't yes. know. And so, <laughs> so that was it. So that's when I went to town, but that's the perfect example. I came at it from a time. Yeah. I'm just not doing this. Yeah, no, it is. And I do think your highest and best use is one of the, the most important things in, in leadership and entrepreneurship is being really clear about what's my skill set, where am I a value add, and where am I actually a drag <laughs> on the system? Where am I slowing down? This this first story that I was telling you about, the, the data, this has been an albatross on his company's neck for a while. Months and months has kept coming up. And because this other person hadn't been in on that part of the conversation, we just hadn't gotten to see that perspective of how easy it would be to write the script to pull the data out and then be able to manipulate it. But but that's what was so fascinating to me, that moment where you know, the, the first guy quickly got that, yeah, the script could pull it out, but it immediately goes, but that won't work because I don't even know what exactly we'll want to pull out on the other side. And I was like, no, 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 no. That's the beauty is that you don't need to know yeah. because once you've, you've basically stripped it out with this script, you can do whatever you want with it. You could play around with it. And if it doesn't work, it's the difference between at least the way it felt as they were talking about it. It's why spreadsheets can be so great versus calculating things on paper. Yeah. Cause if you suddenly are like, Oh wait, I need a whole se different set of math. You have to either start a new paper and do it all over again. Where spreadsheets, you can kind of play through, with the, yeah. you're like, Oh, I'll just change this one thing and now everything changes. I've started to think of it as this, not a red flag, it's sort of canary in the coal mine, sort of red flag kind of thing, where if a problem feels hard, especially if it feels sloggy hard, or as you said, something that's asking me or my client to, to learn a whole new skill set to move forward, it is a great place to take a step back and say, for whom would this be a breeze? Yeah. And I'll tell you that that it's not just, we've been talking about it from sensing internally, it's taking too much of my time or it feels too hard. There's the other side of it is if you actually take a moment to pay attention to the eye rolls of your staff, <laughs> when, because I know this, if, if I get involved in something that's clearly not my highest and best use and worse is somebody else's highest and best use. Mm -hmm. And yet I'm the owner and, or I'm the, the lawyer in charge of this particular matter. And so I, I feel a need internally driven to dive into this and I can feel the tolerance. Right. <sighs> Okay. The, the, the sigh right. and the help. You know, and, and really what the eye rolls are saying is, I respect the fact that you're the owner, but if you just let me do this, mm -hmm. I know how to do it and probably better and faster without your help. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I had two sort of 
outsourcing epiphanies, ahas in my life that just changed everything. And one was when I I first started my coaching practice and I was doing mostly like life coaching and a little bit of business coaching. I got, this is back in the days of like telesummits and you know, there were all these and I got invited to be on this telesummit thing and I was all excited. Is that like an early webinar? um, Yeah. yeah, Well, they were like webinars, but there would be like 20 people and everyone had a giveaway thing. I mean, it's, it's, you know, back when that seemed like a good idea to have like 20 PDFs from, you know, a PDF from 20 (laughs) different people, like you're ever going to read them anyway. But I was excited to be on this thing. It felt like a big deal. And, but you had to have a landing page for your giveaway thingy. And at the time I didn't have that. And I had, I I was trying to do it myself because I'm like, well, I can't really pay this VA to do that because this is like three or four hours of work and it'll cost me a couple hundred bucks. And it just seems ridiculous. And well, we got down to like the last day, like if I didn't have my landing page that day, and I was still CEO of the architecture firm then. It was the very last day. And and they were like, if you don't have this, we're going to, you know, you can't be part of it. And so I panicked because I couldn't do it that day. And I was stuck. And I called this VA who, of course, loved me because I needed it that day, right. which, you know, really, really <laughs> got me lots of gold stars with her. Um, but she did it. And I think she charged like $35 an hour, which is what was like freaking me out. Mm-hmm. I'm like, this is like hours. It's going to cost me a couple hundred dollars. And, and so I called her. She did it. It took her like 20 minutes. I think it cost me like 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 20 bucks. I mean, it cost me nothing to right, have and, her and do seven it. seven hours worrying about oh, my Lord. trying to fit it into yeah, your schedule. Yeah, no, it was yeah. just insane. And to me, it was like, oh my gosh, not only it's a double, not a double whammy, but like a um, double, like a net net kind of thing. Not only was it a vast waste of my time and it took me really, really, really long to do it, but this other person could do it way faster than I could and for cheaper, you know? So I spent, yep. Yeah, I don't even want to count the math of how much time I spent on it and what that could have been in terms of billable hours, but it was such an aha. And we're talking about this in terms of entrepreneurship, but when I was, um, I don't, I don't think I've ever uh, admitted this like out loud when I was, uh, still had my full-time job, I actually used to outsource. I even paid to outsource some of my own things. Like there were certain things that I didn't like to do and I would hire people off of like, um, now it's called Odesk, what it used to be called, like almost like the Fiverr, but yeah, whatever. Yeah. For certain things, I would hire people <laughs> to do things that I just didn't feel like were my highest and best use so that I could use my time doing other things and I got more more productive work. And that's also when I was but, uh, starting my thing. But I'll tell you, okay, so the two things that occurred to me, one is even if you don't have to know the skill itself, you do have to develop, if it's a longer term thing and not a 20 minute thing, you have to develop the checkpoints so that you know the person to whom you've delegated is actually going along the right path. So that's one thing. One thing I did want to mention, and this is my earliest outsource story, which was also my first um, argument with my wife. (laughs) Um, When we moved in together, uh, obviously we, we, not obviously, but we didn't have kids. So we just moved in together. We had a townhouse. And so we were going to split up chores to do, but I really, we were both full time. We were working full time. I didn't really want to do some of these chores. And I wanted to bring in a housekeeper mm-hmm. to take care of this because, and I said these exact words, it's not our highest and best use. And I'm not Mm-mm. talking about just emptying the trash or just normal right. things, the but there are certain and things, the, the scrubbing yeah. and, and even lawn care or whatever. I didn't want to do it. Some people enjoy it. I didn't want to do it. So I said, let's bring in, we're both working full time. Let's use our, um, our, our off resources. time yeah. to enjoy um, the time we have together and use our resources that we gain from working full time to, to pay for things that aren't our highest and best use. And she was adamantly like against having us, none of it, having none of it. So she says, I'm going to make a list and I'm going to divide it in half. And then, you know, whatever. So she did, she divided it in half. And I, I looked at it. And oh I, said, God, okay. I, I know where this is yeah. going. <laughs> and I said to her, okay, I'm going to bring in a housekeeper to do my half. <laughs> And I'm going to pay that person. If you want, as long as that person's going to be here, if you want that person to do your half as well, uh-huh. then please feel free to add it to the list. Oh, my Lord. But this is what I'm going to do. Uh-huh. It was, it was a, um, yeah. it was an I can unsettling see conversation. Face. I can um, see her face. But that's kind of the way it was. And we, we did come to that understanding because she was thinking, well, are we too good to do our own housework? And I get right, that. Right, right, right. But yep. there is, but even in a business context, I laugh at, about it, but even in a business context, there is some of that. I can do this. I can take this on. I'm not either above this or I'm, you know, I'm not 
I have the intelligence to do it. Sure. Or I yeah. can certainly. So there is some of that. And, and, why should I pay if I could possibly do it? Should. And then, and let's not overstep the fact that you, you have to find the person and are they a good person? Like sometimes there are barriers of, I mean, my, the client I was telling the story about, in all fairness, he didn't know somebody who could do those things right, right. off the bat. So he he wasn't even sure how to go find that person. I mean, he it, it's not like he hadn't it hadn't occurred to him that somebody else might be helpful. No, but that's he, true. But it's like if especially the more outside your realm, um, this is why this is why I always come back to the same phrase. You know, it takes a village doesn't just apply to raising kids, like raising businesses, developing businesses. It, you have to have a network where you can put these things out like, hey, I'm having this issue. It, it's why roundtables, I think, are so great because other people have skill sets and perspectives and ideas that you just they're outside the car. No, and that's and that's very true. The the um one thing that I just wanted to return to is if you don't know these people, especially if you don't have somebody you know, like and trust, et cetera. Um, then yes, you do have to develop the guardrails and the checkpoints along the way so you can at least keep track of it. Mm -hmm. And you can know that they're going along the path that's going to lead you to the success that you had envisioned. But trying to recreate somebody else's skill set, mm -mm. I don't have time for that. Never. So that's our story. But the discussion doesn't have to end here. No, it does not. In fact, we don't want it to. No, we don't. <laughs> that is why we actually have our private Facebook group. Which we started to make sure that we could get your comments, your rants, your thoughts. Your stories. Your stories. You can find links to that group as well as show notes and links to subscribe via email and how to find us just about anywhere you can possibly find podcasts at SoHere'sMyStory.com. And you can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at SHMS Podcast. And since we know it takes a village. Yes, it does. <laughs> we'd like to thank our village, our super talented, incredibly patient team. And occasionally snarky Ooh, team. Yeah, but in the best of ways. In the best Loving of ways. Lovingly snarky. Yes. <laughs> Good mockery. So, so a huge shout out to the people who actually help us produce our show. Uh, first, our sound engineer, Tom Hansen. Thanks to Christy Schmier for our brilliant show notes and all the other fantastic writing she does for us. And to Taylor Mathauer for doing just a little bit of everything. Thing. Including wrangling us. Including wrangling us. <laughs> Which is no small feat. No, it's not. This is Jody Hume. And I'm Elliot Wagenheim. And you've been listening to So Here's My Story.